Um, yeah, so as I said, uh, I'm Stephen Albert Pugh. I'm the um, head of technology for Open Ownership, and um, Open Ownership maintains and develops the beneficial ownership data standard in partnership with Open Data Services. So I've got my uh, colleagues here from Open Data Services, including KD Armstrong, who's our lead technical consultant, and who's going to be um, supporting me today. And uh, we are the co-organizers of this working group. So we'll be talking about um, various things that we're doing that relate to the data standard. Um, so what we have planned for today is um, a presentation about the new features of version 0.3, which we released about a month ago. And then I'm um, happy to answer any questions. So if you do have any questions, please put them into the chat or um, save them up for later. And we'll have time at the end of the presentation to talk about them. And then um, after um, after we finish the presentation, we also just want to share um, a few updates with everyone about um, extra news relating to BODS, as we call the Beneficial Ownership Data Standard. Um, uh, including some uh, country implementations we're excited about and work that you'll be able to see if you uh, follow the, the data standards development on GitHub and, and other places where we try to promote it. So um, I'll be doing a quick presentation. And then, like I said, we are um, happy to answer any questions. So please let us know um, as we go. We'll save the questions till the end and we'll be happy to um, talk about them then. Um, here we go. So hopefully everyone can see my presentation now. Um, great. So uh, for people who uh, aren't familiar with the data standard, um, as as <laughs> as me or uh, other people here, um, the beneficial ownership data standard uh, offers a structured data format and guidance as well for producing high quality beneficial ownership data. It's a standard that um, open ownership and open data services have been developing for the last five years. Um, and we're on to the, the, the fourth version of the standard now, so version 0.3. Um, there's a focus in it on internationalization and the best practices to follow uh, in order to connect beneficial ownership data from different jurisdictions. Um, and uh, thanks to the updates we've done in version 0.3, um, you can now capture information about the ownership or control of uh, pub private companies, public listed companies, which is new, um, uh, trusts, arrangements, and um, state-owned enterprises. Uh, BODS is, a, is an open standard that we, we develop um, with community support and we're really keen to get feedback from yourselves via calls like this or to get feedback on um, the GitHub issues that we, we put out there. I'll be talking more about that a little bit later, but we have um, what we call the BODS feature tracker where everyone can see uh, any of the new features that we're thinking about and researching and uh, soon to work into the, uh, into the standard. Um, it's also worth saying that we've got a, a range of open source tools, um, all of which have been updated recently so that you can use them to produce or to visualize or to, to review um, data produced in line with version 0.3. So um, those are available from the uh, uh, Open Ownership website. Um, and uh, I will share just quickly um, the link to, the, to my presentation in the chat. And if you want to follow along with me, all of the links uh, are in there in the um, link from the, the places you can see on the screen. But I think Katie's going to share some of the resources as well, which would be great. Um, so um, BODS, or the Beneficial Data Standard, is now has been implemented by um, Latvia and Armenia. And um, we're excited to say that Nigeria um, is due to launch their new register in, um, by the end of July, we've been promised, um, which will be publishing BODS data. So we're very excited to see that data and to, to check the data when it um, is released. And we'll be talking more about that and we'll share more about that on the, the working group mailing list as soon as that happens. Um, it's also worth saying that um, we map data from um, the UK, Denmark, Slovakia and Ukraine um, from their national registers. Um, but we map it to the Beneficial Ownership Data Standard and make that available via our Open Ownership Register. Um, that's currently against version 0.1 of the standard. And we're also doing work to update that and to, um, to produce it in line with version 0.2. So that's again, something else that should be happening quite soon. And um, the data is either available from the register or via our data analysis tools, um, which were launched back in, back in March, which we're excited to see um, more people using. So the main features um, in version 0.3 of BODS, which as I said, was launched about a month ago, um, are listed 
on the, the page here in front of you now. So uh, we have work on state-owned enterprises, public listed companies. Um, we've uh, expanded the range of interest types that you can capture in BODS. Um, we've provided more documentation. There's documentation relating to state-owned enterprises, but also to um, direct and indirect beneficial ownership and how best to model that and to represent that in, um, in BODS. And uh, there's a range of other kind of smaller changes based on um, the learning and um, research and everything that uh, open ownership and open data services have been doing over the past couple of years. This is actually our first new release in about three years. So very excited that it's a kind of culmination of uh, a lot of work over, over that period that's all come together. So I'm just going to go through some of these features. Um, and like I said, because uh, there's a couple more people who've just joined, um, if you've got any questions, please put them in the chat or um, we'll, uh, and then we'll either be happy to answer them in the chat or to um, to talk about them at the at the end of the session. So um, state owned enterprises, um, crucial part of the, um, the glo global economy, a huge part of the, um, the economy in some um, countries, um, but uh, it's very difficult in, in many cases to understand exactly how some state owned companies are controlled and owned and uh, run, and um, it varies a lot from, from country to country. But in some places, they are such a sizable proportion of the um, of, of the, the economic activity and the, the work that's been done in, in those countries, especially often in around extractive industries, which is some an area of work that open ownership is doing more on these days. Um, that we've uh, we've produced various guidance about why it's important to understand more about how they are managed and how they're owned or controlled, and that has now made its way through into um, into BODS itself. Um, now, so the way we do that, and um, Katie, do you want to do you want to jump in and talk about this at this point, or do you, is it okay? Do you want me to go through it? Um, I'm happy to talk about that if you want me to. Yeah, sure. Yeah, go for it. Um, so I think the main thing to say about how we're representing state-owned enterprises within the data standard is that it's not a tick box. Um, the the very definition of what a, what counts as a state-owned enterprise um, depends on the particular jurisdiction and um, regulations uh, and domain that you're working in. So what we've done is by adding fields such as an entity subtype, which can capture um, a state or a state body, um, and by adding fields like formed by statute, we are allowing the representation of the connections and relationships between a state or a state body and a company or entity, including any um, intermediaries or um, other kind of vehicles or, or entities that, that facilitate that relationship. Um, so, that we've actually got um, some guidance there um, as part of the 0.3 documentation, which explains some of the, the ways that you can use these fields to, um, to represent a particular state-owned enterprise, i.e. the relationship between an entity and the state in a particular case. Stephen, if you want to take it from there, that would be great. Thanks, Katie. Um, let me just go back to. Uh, oh, let me... So yeah, I'll just quickly share that um, guidance in the chat, um, which is there. And yeah, so um, as Katie said, this is. Oh, you can see my full screen now, can you? There we go. Um, so yeah, as Katie said, this has been added to, so this is an extension of uh, what you can capture using the entity statements that are built into, um, into BODS. Just for, for people, and I hope the people on this call are all familiar with this, but the um, BODS itself is organized around um, a connection of, between uh, entity statements on companies, um, person statements, and ownership or control statements that can all be linked together either for simple ownership control chains or um, or much compli more complicated kind of extended chains um so 
uh, as I said, we, you can go to the, the guidance we just shared and um, see the full information about this. And the reason we think this is um, particularly important is, as I said, around, um, especially around extractives, there's uh, a lot of um, requirements um, from groups like EITI, who uh, Open Ownership partner with, about um, what countries need to be able to disclose about the role that state-owned enterprises play in the oil and gas and mining sector in, in those countries. Um, so what you're seeing right now on your screen is the on the left is the, the EITI requirement. So this is the text for what countries that are part of the EITI are, are asked to disclose. Um, and on the right is some of the example diagrams that we've got from the SRE's guidance, just about um, how to represent SREs in, in BODs. Um, it's worth saying that uh, Open Ownership is in partnership with EITI on a project called Opening Extractives, and we'll be doing work with them on that project for the, the next three years at least, um, which is all about how we can help um, countries that are developing uh, beneficial ownership registers for the extractive sector um, to create strong registers that produce good quality data for that sector in the hope that they will be able to roll that out across their full economy at a, at a later stage. Um, so that's state and enterprises. Um, another feature we've added is public listed companies. So in, in lots of cases, um, public listed companies are actually exempt from uh, beneficial ownership disclosure regimes um, because it's felt that um, they are already publishing information via the stock exchange they're listed on. Um, so uh, I, I think in, in certain jurisdictions the feeling is they've already disclosed some information now in our experience what actually happens is that the disclosure and transparency requirements for different stock exchanges are very very different and so some of those um, might not uh, produce enough information um, and we also think that in in terms of capturing full beneficial ownership chains often public listed companies will play an important role in those chains and so it'd be good to have a way to capture information about them, even if you're not capturing the full beneficial ownership information, but you can capture something about where they sit in those chains. So now what we've done um, for, again, for um, under uh, within the entity statements um, is we've added a new kind of public listings um, section for, uh, with the fields that you can see listed in front of you. So that if there is a, um, a, an entity that's publicly listed, therefore it is um, exempt from providing full beneficial ownership information. You can show in BODs, you know, there is information that is not published here because this company is exempt. Uh, and now this uh, would allow publishers to then say it's exempt. And but here's the public listing where you can go and see the company filings and um, the stock exchange that that company is is listed on in case there might be more information there that would be useful for people who are looking into this area now again um this is key for organizations like eiti and the um um yeah eiti uh, do a lot of work with companies as well as countries and uh are pushing forward especially with some of the large extractor companies you can see on the right hand side here um with ways that they can uh, improve their transparency around who they're dealing with and and around extractives like how public listed companies are part of um the yeah the ownership control chains and and just part of the, the wider picture um for countries um and their um extractive sectors um so you can see on the on the left hand side is the the eiti requirement 2.5 that talks about um what public listed companies should disclose um, as part of the eiti process and on the right is the the list of companies that actually joined with EITI and open ownership to say that they would commit to doing and um, publishing much more about their um, the beneficial ownership of themselves and their um, joint ventures and subsidiaries um, in in the, the near future. So we're still we're still working on this with them. But now because it's in BODs, we hope that that would be a great incentive for them to use BODs. Um, it's worth saying now that we so um, we under our ownership or control statements capture a, a whole range of um, interests that people can um, can hold uh, in terms of their ownership control and and this is the the list of additional ones that we've added recently so you can see things like board member and board chair unknown interest unpublished interest uh, usufruct, uh which is the which is a fun one to say always at the end which is the right to profit or 
income from assets. So this is an effort by us to make sure that we can expand the interest types you can capture in BODs to um, to make sure you can capture all sorts of um, uh ownership or control interests now there's still more to add um again you can go on github and you can see the work we did on here and there's still there's some more work we need to do in this area to improve how we handle um these kind of interests but this is the these are the ones that have been added recently in, in 0.3 um as i said earlier on we're uh, with implementers uh who are using bod so far we've seen some um some issues where people um were not uh, fully using all the features of, of bots to um, represent direct and indirect ownership chains. Um, so uh, there's more documentation in the technical guidance section um, on the bots website. So the, uh, all the bots documentation is at standard.openownership.org. So if you go into technical guidance there, you'll be able to see the information here. And again, all of these links are in the, the presentation that I, I shared in the chat and uh, we'll make sure to include that with the with the video when we send this to people um finally there's a there's a full um change log uh, published on the, the standards website um which gives you also the the kind of smaller all the all the changes we've been talking about today and the new technical guidance that's published but also a kind of series of smaller changes we've made uh, around some of the interest types and um and things like that so um over to everyone here please let me know if you if you have any questions about um, any of what was just presented either you can put your hand up um, or put a comment in the chat if you would like um, thanks Katie for sharing those links can't see any questions um maybe what I'll do is if, if people consider and think about any questions they've got um while uh while you're thinking about that um I will carry on and, and give a kind of quick update of some other things that are um going on relation to bots uh and then see if any of those also lead to any any questions so um just a quick summary of some of the um exciting stuff that's been happening recently or is just about uh, due to happen um, relating to BODs. So uh, since we last met, so I think the last working group call that we had was back in March, um, the UK government has actually approved uh, BODs to be the official um, open standard for the UK government to use to collect, um, use and publish beneficial ownership information. So the, the link there is to the, the guidance that's on gov.uk. So we uh, for the last uh, about a year or nine months before leading up to um, to March, we were working with the Open Standards Board in the UK and very excited to see that happen. Um, and since then, we've been in conversations with the UK government about how best they can take advantage of boards. There, uh, there were, if you want to look it up, there's this blog post that um, I can share as well, uh, explaining how um, the... Uh, the data team, uh, the cabinet office in the UK think that BODs could be a very useful tool for delivering the economic crime bill. Um, uh, the first one of which uh, one economic crime bill has been passed and um, should lead uh, it actually in about two weeks time to the, the launch of the register of overseas entities um, by, by various government departments in the UK. Um, so we're excited that that's not going to, it's not going to use BODs to start with, but um, there's, I think, really good opportunities for us to, to work with the government. So we're talking to people like Companies House, who are the business registrar in the UK, uh, the Crown Commercial Service, who look after procurement, um, and also teams like the Competition and Markets Authority, who did some have done some interesting work in their data science team using bots, um, which you can find uh, during um, in the, the video that we produced for our last technology showcase a couple of months ago. It's on the Open Ownership website. Um, so yeah, so we're very, very pleased about that. And um, that approval has led to some great conversations with, with countries um, around the world as well. So we hope that those are all gonna, gonna pay off uh, in the near future. Um, it's worth saying that we we have a range of tools, as I mentioned earlier on, on the Open Ownership website and uh, living on GitHub and other places um, to use BODS data. Um, and those have all now been updated to either generate or to accept 
data that's produced in line with version 0.3. So there's the BUDS ge uh, data generator, which is a spreadsheet template you can use to take beneficial ownership information and structure it as version 0.3 BUDS data. There's a data review tool that you can use there and also the, um, the library that you can use for, for larger data sets related to that. Um, there's a visualization library and a visualization tool that lives on the Open Ownership website. So anyone who has any BODS data can supply that to um, that library in order to automatically generate the diagrams in line with our beneficial ownership visualization system. Um, now, that has actually been already been used by the Armenian e-register. And uh, we're in conversations with the Nigerian register for them to use it as well. And um, there are plans for a, a company called Foster Moore who are um, producing company registry software to actually also um, use that in their product that they are releasing soon because they um, have built a product that has BODS as its kind of um, backbone for the way the, the, the data is structured. So very excited about that. Um, as I said as well, that um, Nigeria has promised that by the end of um, end of July, so very very soon now, um, that they will be um, releasing and and showcasing the BODS data. They'll be launching a new version of their beneficial ownership register that publishes data to BODS, and we'll be very excited to to look at that. Um, and also, we'll be uh, if you keep an eye on the Open Ownership website, we'll obviously announce that it's happened, but then we're also going to be looking at the data and seeing what we can learn from it as, as soon as we possibly can. As I said, we, we are um, updating the Open Ownership Register. Now, for people who haven't used that, that's at register.openownership.org. And it is um, a kind of prototype transnational register that pulls together data from the, the UK, Denmark, Slovakia and Ukraine and um, allows you to combine all of those registrars um using the beneficial ownership data standard and now it, it publishes to version 0.1 at the moment and it'll soon publish to version 0.2 of bods um and using many more fields so much more detailed source information and lots of other information that we uh pulling in there um with the benefit of combining it with open corporates data as well um who we're, we're partnered with um the next one i'm going to try and hand back over to Katie briefly because she's um doing the work so Katie if you can talk about the change over time work that'd be great um yeah so this is is less likely to be a technical briefing now than it will be a blog post um and um we're actually sort of talking about it uh, in that new blog post as auditability and the auditability of historical records of beneficial ownership um we use the shorthand change over time um, to refer to that feature when it comes to um, representing changing beneficial over changing beneficial ownership over time in the data standard um, but it's it's been a helpful process to um, get some of the thinking out of our heads and onto paper and uh, and have other people consider the issues um, we're expecting it to um, focus on the range of dates and uh, sort of date content that you need in beneficial ownership information, um, as well as the uh, the ways that information gaps are covered and historical information is is retained and made. Um, easy to understand and to search through effectively. So that should be coming out in, I think around a month's time maximum, hopefully. And I'll, should I speak about the last one as well? Yeah, Steve? yeah, go for it. Yeah, and also we have, um, and I'll ask Stephen to put the link in, but we have um, the feature development tracker, which is a project on our GitHub repository. and. The, the the tracker really aims to make visible the um the challenges and the issues the big challenges the big issues that we are dealing with um and thinking about incorporating into the data standard so it's part of transparency and and uh, you know un will underpin the governance of the um, first version of the standard um and we i think we've currently got three um, sort of 
issues there that are under consideration, but we've been writing up um, the kind of challenge statements around issue, some other issues that we're going to be considering towards a, an, a version one of the standards. So we've been um, setting out the challenges around things like um, whether um, a beneficial ownership declaration should be a concept that is um, visible within some kind of data structure within the standard. Um, we're also looking at um, issues around categorization of entities and subclassification of entities. So at the moment we have very simplistic uh, sort of legal entity, registered entity, now we've got a state, and we also have this idea of a state body being a sort of subcategory um, related to state, but um, we we think we're going to need a better uh, and more nuanced sort of categorization. And um, we also need to consider how the data standard, while being, while aiming to standardize beneficial ownership information from many different jurisdictions, we also want it to be fairly semantically lossless. We want jurisdictions, we want business registers to be able to make sure that their um, local context also comes out through the data. So we're considering that as part of these efforts around categorization and, and main maintaining the facility of including local definitions and code lists and so on. Um, and there are a few other biggish features that we will be writing up and and getting onto that feature tracker soon. Again, with the aim of um, making visible our plans towards a version one of the standard and um, being clear about which, um, which challenges we're gonna take on first and get into the next releases. I'll hand back to Stephen. Brilliant, thanks Katie. Um, I still, I can't see any questions. So um, if anyone has any questions, please do uh, put up a hand or uh, unmute yourselves and, and shout right now. Um, so that's that's basically uh, what we want to share today. Lots of resources. I will make sure to um, share this video and to share the, the presentation and, and some of the links with, with people who um, wanted to join us today, but sadly weren't able to. Um, and obviously, if you if you do have any questions, we'd be very interested to hear your thoughts um, via the issues that are going to be added on GitHub or via um, contacting or reaching out to us. So, um, you know, I'm uh, Stephen at oh, with a ph at openownership.org if you want to email, um, or you can also reach the um, Open Ownership Help Desk just by emailing support at openownership.org. So, um, yeah. Uh, if you do have any questions, please do get in touch. Um, but if not, thank you very much for joining us today. And I guess we'll finish a bit early and let everyone uh, have a bit of time back to themselves. But um, if if any of the um, the documentation or anything um, raises further questions, please, as I say, do um, let us know. And we'll be very excited to to share some of the um, the updates and some of the, the further work that's due to happen in in the coming months. Um, yeah, so thank you very much, and I will stop the recording now and end the call in a second. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Stephen.